your girl lady brown sugar and i welcome you back to my channel and today i have along with me is destiny and i hope you're having a wonderful day i hope you had a great weekend and i hope that god has blessed you in so many ways so today what are we having destiny we having a pre-thanksgiving y'all <laughs> Um, so on the menu we have sweet potato casserole. I have pork chops, um, corn pudding, homemade collard greens, some deviled eggs. Um, Mama got collard greens, casserole. She have honey ham, deviled eggs, corn pudding, and mac and cheese. Yes, y'all. She was hollering about some. She needed some Thanksgiving dinner, and if Thanksgiving was too far away, so. <laughs> We just whipped up a little something something just to make her content for the moment. Yep. But I hope that you go grab you something and, and join us on today's adventure and today's food. So grab you something to eat. Let's get into the prayer and then we're going to get into this food. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for today, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your grace and mercy. I ask you, Lord, to bless those that are watching this video, Lord. I ask you to go into their homes, Lord, and bless them with whatever their heart desires, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to bless the food that we're about to receive to nurse our body. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all. It's been a day. Preparing food just reminds me what I have to look forward to for Thanksgiving. And I'm not ready for it. But anyways, what are y'all eating today? Y'all ready for Thanksgiving? Like I've been watching Thanksgiving mukbangs and Christmas mukbangs. You all right? Got a hot sauce, y'all. And she asked me, Mama, are you ready for the holidays? <laughs> Just for the days off. <laughs> nah, I'm ready for some good food, too. But, yeah. Y'all ready for it? What are y'all cooking? Leave your comment down below. Let us know. I'm ready for them. Even though I'm eating a little bit of what the food going to be like, I eat the whole thing. Do you really? Mm-hmm. Y'all. Mm. You good? I'm so excited. <laughs> How y'all been doing now? Y'all. Before we get into the topic, I've been seeing a lot of what's it called? Angel numbers or whatever they're called, like the four four four, the eleven eleven. I've seen so far four of them. So I guess I'm doing something right. Are you? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. The universe is aligning with me. Is it? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good thing. What you like? That's amazing. <laughs> and it has, honestly, because the things I was going through, it took a turn. Well, that's good. So. That is really good. Mm-hmm. Is it good? <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> oh, here. Yeah. Mm. She was like, Mom, come on here. Let's eat. <laughs> she was trying to make me wait, y'all. She told my son, You ready to eat now? You up now? I was trying to sit down and chill for a little bit longer. You know how after you cook so much food and stuff, I'm not saying this is a lot of food, but I'll cook more than this, but you just know how you cook a lot of food. After you cook a lot of food, you just don't even want to eat. 
You might be hungry, but you'd be too, too tired to eat. Pork chops, man. I have to admit, they do look real good. These pork chops busting. They look real good. You did a good job for me. Thank you. Ooh. You full already? Mm mm. <laughs> I just gotta breathe. I gotta breathe. I gotta breathe again. Yeah. So y'all, it's the month of October. And it's almost over with. And it, it's almost Halloween. It almost, it just came in and it's almost over with. I ain't mad because I'm ready for Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, this girl been hollering about Christmas. And she changes her what she wants like every okay, day. Okay, okay, okay. But this is the first year I've actually had a Christmas wish. Like the first year. So it's like and the things that I want is essential. Like there are needs. Like I actually need these things. Mm -hmm. They're not like, oh I want it. I mm -hmm. actually need these things. Okay. And that's right. You're right. You are right. Can't fuss with you on that. I just don't want to get it to myself. <laughs> and the time that I would use it would be like in the beginning of the year. So Christmas, you gotta take advantage of it somehow. I feel you. But I'm ready for Christmas because I'm hoping for snow. Not a lot, but just enough so I can take pictures. I want to take pictures. This That's year. all she want to do with a photo shoot, y'all. Yeah. Like, look, let me find you the studio with some fake snow. It's not the same. I mean, if I don't get any snow, then I will. Which we really don't get snow in December anyway with the past since I was probably like a little girl anyway. But um I think maybe January, February we probably get snow. So we'll get snow in December. I'm taking pictures when this it goes. Is good. It is good. I don't even want to talk. <laughs> nah, but um, this is the month of October. So in October, we have um, cancer awareness. And we also have domestic violence, violence awareness. Um, let's talk a little bit about cancer. Um, uh, cancer... It's like a touchy subject for me because I've had a lot of people that I know um, that's been dealing with cancer. Um, and then also, most of the time they tell women to get mammograms around about the age of 40. When you get about 40, a little bit over 40. Well, I had a friend who was diagnosed with cancer. And the crazy thing about it was, before she was diagnosed, I had went to the hospital and they had told me there was possible possibility that I had cancer. So I went through all these tests for days um, with them putting me in machines and taking my blood and they, you know, they just kept telling me, you know, that they felt, that felt like I had cancer and going through thousands and thousands of dollars of tests 
and I didn't have cancer, thanks to God. Um, but I had a friend who, you know, she was checking on me and the whole time I was going through my process and she was just like, you know, everything is going to be all right. Just to come find out that she was the one that had cancer. Um, at the time, I believe she was 36 when she found out. She's 37 now, I believe. And, um, she, uh, felt a lump. And I think she waited before she went to go get checked. And in the process of her waiting, you can only imagine what can be going through their head and what they could be thinking about. And so um, she, you know, talked to her mom about it. You know, her mom, you know, she, you know, told her that she needed to go to the doctor or whatnot. She went to the doctor. The doctor tried to tell her it was nothing to worry about that she was okay, that it was just something like it was normal, not to worry about it. Anyway. So if she had only had listened to that doctor, sometimes it pays to get second opinions. Because if she had listened to that doctor and did not go get checked, the cancer could be worse than what it was. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think she was in stage two, maybe three. Um, but when she finally did go see another doctor to get, you know, another opinion, they uh, ran tests and stuff on her and came to find out, yes, yeah, she did have cancer. And, um, you know, just to hear those words and not thinking, well, first of all, her hand a doctor tell you don't worry about it, you okay, and that's not what it is, like. How can you tell somebody that if you don't even run tests, first of all? Well, with me, how you diagnosed me that I had cancer and you hadn't even ran the test. So it always, you know, good to get second opinions about things. But anyway, she did go get another opinion. They did, you know, confirm that she did have cancer. Um, and y'all, she's not 40 yet. So... Um, my suggestion is to make sure that you're checking yourself, make sure that you do go get tested because we never know. It's coming and hitting people at earlier ages than 40. So you definitely want to get tested. You want to make sure, you know, we should be getting routine checkups anyway, in which we don't like to do that, but we need to. Um, so yes. Um, she ended up getting checked and um, she did end up, she did have cancer. Um, she had the surgery. She's, you know, going through, she went through chemo and now she's going through radiation and still has a long journey ahead of her. Um, it's not easy. And the sad thing about it is when jobs, you have been on jobs for years and it's like when these type of things come your way, I can't say that they don't really care, but with their rules and regulations and stuff that they have, like... And sometimes it's not even rules and regulations. Sometimes they are able to bend those rules and regulations. They just don't want to make accommodations for you. And that's true. That's true. How they, you know, put your job on the line, trying to threaten you with your job, threaten you with insurance. Like, come on, people. This person been working with you for years. Why would you do that? But, you know, I've heard a lot of people that said, you know, once they've got sick or whatever, and they had to take some time off of work, how they dealt with, you know, the company giving them a hard time and the company not want to work with them and stuff like that. But when you've got good workers and they have been there, they barely take off, they always doing like they're supposed to, like, come on, y'all, work with these people because it's hard to find good workers, you know, real hard to find good workers. Not only just women go and get checked, men, please go get checked. Um, you know, we've had, you know, family members you know, who's had um, cancer, prostate cancer and stuff. And, you know, sometimes we ignore signs. You know, we get the signs and we ignore them to the point where the signs start getting extreme. So um, just go get checked. 
get that routine checked up. Like, I know you might not like going to doctors. I hate going to doctors. But at the end of the day, it can save your life, you know. Um, you don't want to be to the point where when you go to the hospital and they're telling you you had a stage 4 cancer or if you had came in a little bit earlier when you was having the first symptom, we could have did something about it. You know, but now, you know, we're only going to give you a couple of days because, or a month or two because you came in late. We can prevent some things by going and getting checked. Um, I just want to say, and also too, like, support you know, um, the people who have cancer, you know, they go through a whole lot. They might not tell you, you know, anything, or they might not want to talk about it, but just make sure you're there for them to listen whenever they decide to open up and want to speak about it. It's not an easy process. Just imagine you going and you getting chemo and radiation and like your skin tone just changes, like it burns your skin and your energy level is really low. You don't feel like doing nothing. You you feel like your whole life is just gone, you know. Um, so, you know, be a support team as much as possible. Try to help, you know. Um, also, some of the um, centers around here where they go get, you know, chemo radiation, they do have where you could donate, like, snacks and stuff for them as well. Um, so if you get a chance to do that, just, you know, just stop by one day, drop off some snacks for them, you know, cause they do need it, you know, while they're going through this process, it will, you know, cheer them up and everything. So do support that. Anything that you want to say? She quiet today, y'all. <laughs> she didn't ate that food. I got that And ice. look, any <laughs> other time she talking over top of me. Um, so let's talk about domestic violence. Anything you want to say about domestic violence? Um, I don't know. That's a touchy subject. I would just say, um, if you are going through it, I know it's not easy. Um, I know it's not easy to get out, one. I know, you know, it's like, I don't know, you gotta live, like, the people who do go through it, it's like, you would really know, you wouldn't know unless you see, you know, the bruises, as soon as, you know, that person gets them, and they're like, oh, what happened, they all say, like, a, a, a fake story, but if you actually know a person, and can, like, really tell, like, okay, this person's off, then you won't really know because they're they quiet when it comes about their personal life and even sometimes when people are open about it they get clowned and it's not even women who get um abused men can get abused too and they definitely don't speak about it because they don't want to be known as the man who got beat up by a woman and women who think that's okay is not because then when say if he turn around and start beating you then you want to play victim and that's not something that you can you want to do mm -hmm. so i would just say to the people who are going through it i'm sorry you're going through it i do hope it get it gets better and try you know definitely reach out to the people that you trust the most but not only that it is a way out yeah, it's definitely a way out. You, you not, you will not be stuck in that situation forever. I know that you might feel like that right now, mm -hmm. but in the end, it's it's always a way out of a situation. Always a way out. It is. It's a way. It's definitely a way out. And like she said, it's not always the women who are getting beat up. And let's let's also just not correct, but just let's also put it out there that. Domestic violence is not just physical abuse. No. Um, it can be verbal as well. And people don't understand verbal is just as bad as physical. Um, men, like, it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to, you know, tell somebody what you're going through. And don't think because you, 
you have a woman that's physically or verbally abusing you that it's okay or people are gonna make fun of you because at the end of the day, like it's wrong. It's it's not right. Mm-hmm. It's not right for people to be abused. It's not right for people to beat on you or talk to you any kind of way. And it's not cool. You know, um they have shelters and places for people to go to um when they're dealing with these type of situations yeah um there is places for you um they have a hotline that you can call uh which is 1-800-799-SAFE that's 1-800-799-7233 you can call that number if you're dealing with domestic violence don't be silent about it because your life is worth more than what you're dealing with. Trust and believe that. Don't never accept the fact that somebody put their hands on you that it's okay. I don't care how much they tell you they love you. They don't love you if they're don't fighting apologize. you. They don't love you if they're putting their hands on you. They don't love you if they're talking to you like you nobody. That is not love. Mm-hmm. It took me one time to go through a situation. And that was it. Like, honey, you out that door. Because I'm not going to allow you to talk to me any kind of way. And I'm not going to allow you to put your hands on me. And the the worst part of it all is when you have kids. Because you got to understand that your kids is affected by that mentally. They can't do their schoolwork. They scared to go to sleep. They tired of hearing you arguing, fussing, and fighting. It's not good for the kids. It's not good for you. So don't sit there and allow it to happen. Don't sit there and not do nothing about it. Do something about it. I understand you might be scared, but at the end of the day, like, you don't want your kids around that. You don't want your kids to have to go through that for the rest of their life. You don't want your kids to do the same thing that they're doing. Because you have to understand, if a child sees something that's being done and you're not Correcting. fixing the problem, okay, then they're going to think it's okay for them to do it. Yep. And that's what you don't want. You don't want your your son out here beating up on a, a little girl in school or beating up on his girlfriend when he get older or his wife. And you don't want your daughter doing the same thing or either taking the abuse or your son taking the abuse. It's not acceptable. No. So you got to nip it. <laughs> you know, do whatever it takes to, to, to stop what's going on. And like I said, there's a lot of people out here to talk to. You can go and get help. So don't feel like you can't go get help. You or can. That it's, you know, you, you some people feel like, oh, well, if I leave, this is the only place I have. A lot of people, some people don't have family that they can go to because it's like, there's always like a a history or like a background behind a relationship. Some people get in relationships and the family told them off back, this person not good for you, but you didn't want to listen mm-hmm. to your family. And now you and your family don't talk and now you stuck in that situation and you feel like, okay, my family was right. And with my family being right, it's like, I don't want them to rub it in my face. I told you, I told you. Go back to your family. And if, and if they rub it in your face, it's better you to be safe than for you to just you mm-hmm. hearing somebody say, I told you. Because they would rather you be safe too in the end. I would rather hear somebody tell me, I told you so, versus me getting my tail beat and yep. almost dying. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is not cool to have to deal with somebody beating your tail. It is not cool for it to happen in front of your child. Like, not at all. Like, my daughter seen what I went through with my ex. And mm-hmm. it mentally affected her. Yeah. And it's not cool. You know, it is not cool. I thank God for my associate pastor because I went to him. And me going to him, he told me everything I needed to do to get out of the situation. Like, I'm telling you, when he took me, when I went to court, like, they was like, I have never seen anybody who stepped foot in this court and got what it did, what they needed within a, I think I was in there less than five minutes. I literally told the judge, this is what I'm dealing with. I showed her the bruises. She was like, okay, we got it taken care of. 
But it was this dumb cop. I tried, I tried, I tried. She didn't have that. <laughs> it was oh. this dumb cop who was having his own personal issues at yeah. home. And he felt like, you know, all women was wrong. So he was taking up for him. That's what made me mad. It was the fact that they didn't even care about me. He met the cops outside, told the cops all these lies. The cop came in here all wrong at me. Like, you know, you shouldn't even be acting like this. And da, da, da. I mean, the cop was so wrong. But when I got done with him, he was apologizing. Because we have to understand our role in our job. You got to stay in your lane. If you having problems with issues at home, it should not affect you professionally. You cannot take that out on somebody that you run across in your job field because it's not right. You being a cop and you having issues at home and you taking that out on me because you and your wife or you and your girlfriend got problems. I'm sorry, honey. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that this time. So, yeah, needless to say, that same cop that came that night that I called the cops on him. He took up for him. They did not ask me, was that okay? They did not ask me, did I need any medical attention? They took his word for everything. Did not care what I had to say at all. But guess what? Guess who had to come back and then put him out? And guess who had to make sure that I was safe? That same cop who did me wrong the first time. And he got reprimanded for what he did. And he should have. Because for him to take up for somebody who did not know what really was going on, did not care what I went through. Now, one time, did not care. Like, it was wrong. Yeah, and it affected my daughter. Mm -hmm. She was trying to fight him, and I'm trying to hold on to her. <laughs> I was, y'all. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't play with my mama. And I don't care how, how old was I, probably like 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Man. And this girl, I'm trying to. It was no. She dragging me across the. I'm trying to prevent her from fighting him. And I'm trying to hold on to her. And she drug me clean across the floor like she was a football player. Yo, when I'm mad, I'm mad. I'm I mad. was like. There's no stopping me. Like, if you can stop me, you got, you, and God is, is stopping me. Because I'm telling you, when I'm mad, when I'm furious, it's over with. Like, she Crazy. was like, I'm tired of you. I'm just tired of you talking to my mama like that. I'm tired of you doing mama. And I'm dr I'm literally dr <laughs> like a football player dragging another football player across the field. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Yo, she was so strong that night. I was like, oh It my came God. out of nowhere. Like, that's why I say, I don't, y'all, I have never been to, I got one fight. I was five years old. Ever since then, I have never been to a fight. Never. Never have I had I a fight. I feel sorry for anybody who tests her because this girl's strongest. I don't know what. When I used to have to spank her when she was little, <laughs> I would literally have to sit on her. Yeah. Like, sit on her and spank her because this girl is, <sighs> look. I'm telling She's strong. you, and, and people, people look at me, they be like, oh, like, my friends, they be like, Destiny, you can't fight, because I've never seen you get into a fight. People don't, don't test never, me. Uh, they'll never estimate people don't test me. anybody. I don't care how small they are. I don't care how quiet they are. I don't care. You can never underestimate anybody, because, look, anybody can get it. I don't care yeah. what you look like, what size like you Like I said, are, no I was knocker. trying to fight a man. He taller than me, and he was bigger yeah. than me. He was like 6'2", 6'3". Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. He didn't can't. fear me at all that no, night. No, she was going after <laughs> him. And I'm trying all. to stop. <sighs> yeah. Listen, it's not worth it, y'all. That's not love. It's not something that you need to go through. It's not something that you will, will want your child to go through. It's a terrible experience. I don't ever... Like, ever since that, I have not been back in a relationship. Yeah, and I ain't trusted nobody since. I, it's been, I haven't been in a relationship for over four years now. And, like, like, he just, like, made me not want to be in a relationship because I'm just like, yo, these men, these days, crazy. And don't get me wrong, not all men are like that. But, you know, the ones who make it bad for others, like, yeah, my trust is, my guard is up high. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, listen, y'all. Don't 
sit there and deal with it. Do not sit there and deal with nobody beating you, talking to you any kind of way. Do not do it. It's not worth it. There is somebody out there who can love you for you. There's somebody out here that will treat you right. There's somebody out there who is not going to beat your tail, flip you over chairs, talk to you any kind of way. It's somebody out there who will, will do you right. Mm -hmm. So don't think that you need to stay in that position. Don't think you need to stay there because you don't have nowhere else to go. Yes, there is somewhere else to go. It is somewhere that you can get help and that they will make sure that you are safe. There is a way out. So... I'm not going to hold y'all long. I just want to touch on those two things for this month. Um, I hope that we have said something that, you know, helps you along the way. And like I said, once again, that domestic violence hotline is 1-800-799-SAFE. 1-800-799-7233. Please use it if you need it. Don't sit there and stay Somewhere where you're not loved yeah. at all. Don't do not do it. I will say this. I watched this um, video with this girl. She pretended like she was ordering a pizza. And she had called a hotline. I actually think she called the police. Mm -hmm. And um, the dispatcher caught on to what she was doing. So, like... The dispatcher was like, if you want, say extra pepperoni if he's armed, or say this and that, or how many people's in the house, and they would say, like, how, like, if you gotta put yourself in that type of situation to act like you ordering a pizza, or you calling a family member or something, do that, because they will catch on. Mm -hmm. You might think that they not, but they, they have, have they have certain codes that they do um go by and i believe i do believe when you do call 911 and say you want to order a pizza i think that is one of the the codes they do use if i'm not mistaken because i've seen it i've seen that happen a couple of times but do what you got to do people just don't stay and don't sit there and let nobody just abuse you beat on you talk to you in a kind of way because you're worth more than that yeah you're very worth more than that everybody worth something Yep, more and don't let nobody tell you that you're not. Don't let nobody tell you that you're nobody, that you're never going to be nobody. Because if God created you, first and foremost, you are somebody. You are beautiful, you are handsome, you are loved, you are wanted, and you are needed. Don't let nobody tell you different. I don't care of your circumstances, your situations, how you look. I don't care. You are wanted, you are needed. You're on this, you was on this earth for a reason and for a purpose. Whether or not you know your purpose or not, you're here. And you'll find it sooner or later. Yes. So, being that that I was saying, I, um, <laughs> I just hope that if somebody out here who's looking at this, do go find help if you are dealing with something. Go find help. And, you know, you can always leave us a comment. Like, we're willing to talk to you, whatever the case may be. Willing to pray for you, whatever the case may be. Um, I will leave my information in also the description box um, where you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, it's Lady Brown Sugar or either Lady Brown Sugar 21. That's L-A-D-I-B-R-O-W-N-S-U-G-A. Or what the 21 is the number 21 behind it and um, like, like I said if you need prayer or if you need to talk we're available to talk to you because we don't want nobody to feel like there's no hope right. there is hope for everybody regardless of your situation regardless of your circumstances there is hope so Make sure that you comment, make sure that you like, make sure that you subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified for when we do upcoming videos. I hope that you stay locked in to us. We love all of you. And as always, be blessed and be a blessing. Bye. Bye.